to painting with granulating watercolors. The first exercise I'd like to look at is these three very similar paintings I did with just granulating colors. I wanted to compare the effects of the different granulators on hot press, cold press, and rough watercolor paper. All three of these are Arches 300 pound, and I painted them side by side. After painting generic floral shapes in various granulating colors, I let them dry and then I washed over each sheet with a light layer of water to see if I could further granulate the paints. Generally, cold press and rough work much better with granulators. The smoothness of hot press paper prevents the granules from soaking into the little divots and rough valleys that are more present in the cold press and the rough paper. However, you can see here that hot press creates its own sort of reaction with granulating paints. So you should figure out what you prefer and what works best for you. Consider painting just swatches if you prefer, or florals like this. I picked something generic that didn't involve any drawing, just to give me an excuse to start putting color and paint onto my papers and see how they reacted and dried. Take some time and figure out what paper works best for your preferences. For today's project, we're going to paint an old leather boot. Leather is definitely one of the surfaces that we can capture easily with our granulating paints. Let's get started. Here are the swatches of the paints I use for my painting. Buff Titanium, Piemontite Genuine, which by itself does a great job showing leather. Hematite Genuine for darker areas, such as the shadows. Yellow Ochre for the highlight in the toe of the boot. And then I used Indigo, which is not a heavy granulator but I needed something smoother and very dark for the sole of the shoe. The demo will play at twice the speed at which it was actually filmed. I drew the boot on 300 pound arches rough paper. And I start by painting the very lightest sections of the boot. The interior of the boot is going to be buff titanium. And for the darker areas, a touch of hematite genuine and my paint is at a milky consistency. A milky consistency means that there is quite a bit of pigment in my puddle and it'll show up nicely. It won't fade too much as it dries but it's not so thick that it doesn't flow smoothly off of my brush when I touch it to paper. I also use the buff titanium to paint a line of the light color I see where the stitching is, where the leather meets the sole. I don't worry about the fact that it's stitching. At this point, I'm just going to paint in the line. And I will also use the buff titanium to paint in a few edges where we see the thickness of the leather and it is shown as being lighter than the rest of the leather. There's also a stripe on the sole that is a little bit more yellow than that uh, buff titanium. So I get some yellow ochre and I paint in the stripe that I see running along the sole of the shoe. I add just a touch of hematite genuine to my yellow ochre to dull it down a bit. I see a few really small shapes through the eyelets of the boots where the laces would go. And I paint them in with watered down cobalt teal blue and manganese blue mixed together. I'm basically looking for all the areas in this painting that are the lightest and I paint those first. Now that my interior of the boot is dry, I mix a very watery puddle of hematite genuine and I paint it into that area where I see the dark markings. 
these dark shadows have some hard edges and some soft edges. So where it has a soft edge, you see me softening it with my damp brush. While it's still damp, I drop in even more Hematite Genuine into those areas. I drop it in wet into wet. I just barely touch my brush into those damp areas and let the darker paint flow into them. The less I brush, the more granulation I'll get. With some watery yellow ochre, I paint in the toe of the boot, which, as I look at my reference picture, really is the highlight of the boot. I'm finally ready to dive into painting the dark leather. I mix quinacridone burnt orange with Piemontite Genuine. This is at a milky to a slightly thicker consistency, bordering on creamy. And as I paint, I paint in the direction of the boot, running my brush across the front of that boot. I don't mix my colors much on my palette. Instead, I keep a puddle of quinacridone burnt orange and it is separate from my puddle of Piemontite Genuine. Every time I need to reload my brush, I mix a slightly different version of these two colors. That way the color keeps changing as I continue painting the boot. It doesn't look like it's just painted the same hue and value across the entire boot. I'm painting across the toe of the boot leaving just one little area of the yellow ochre showing through. While the paint is still wet, I load up my brush with Hematite Genuine at a fairly strong consistency. And I create a few brush strokes where I see the darkest shadows of the boot. I pick up Hematite Genuine, again fairly thick, and I re-emphasize those shadows. I'm working pretty quickly while the initial layer is still damp. That way these shadows can diffuse smoothly into the redder, lighter leather color. While that dries, I paint the heel of the boot. And as I look at my reference photo, I see that it is quite a bit darker than the toe of the boot. I'm painting with the same colors, but at a thicker consistency. While the paint on the toe of the boot is still damp, I decide to drop in some darker shadows where I see them, right along the farther edge and across the toe. I just do one quick brush stroke and leave it alone after that. I let everything dry and take a 20 minute break. I need to keep hard edges between the different sections of leather and the exterior and the interior. So there are moments of having to let everything dry. I continue painting the leather using the same colors. I use Hematite Genuine for all the darkest shadows I see in the leather. For the more medium tones, I continue to use Quinacridone Burnt Orange and Piemontite Genuine. 
Now that I have my lightest shapes in place and a lot of my middle value shapes, I paint in the darkest shapes I see. I'm using indigo at a fairly thick consistency. And I paint in a few of those eyelet holes that are completely black. I also come in and paint the sole of the shoe. At this point, all the other paint on my paper is completely dry. I decide to warm up the indigo with some quinacridone burnt orange. It ties it in nicely to the orange that is already in the boot. It's a subtle addition and maybe not even obvious to viewers, but for me, indigo blue is such a cold blue color and adding that quinacridone orange just warms it up ever so slightly so that it is a pretty warm black color. The dark sole on this boot really gives my painting a solid feel of three dimensionality. This paint is pretty thick. I don't want to have to paint that sole several times. Using the same thick puddle of indigo and quint burnt orange, I stipple a few dark marks across that stripe I painted earlier where the stitching is. This creates the illusion of stitching. I put down my small brush and I reach for a slightly bigger one to paint the bigger area of the leather. I'm using the same colors of Quinn Burnt Orange and Piedmontite Red. I absolutely love this combination for leather. I continue to paint in the direction of the leather. That way, if my thick paint happens to leave any brush marks, they would be going in the direction of the texture of the leather and working for me instead of against me. For those areas where there's darker shadows, I don't add hematite this time. I just thicken up the paint I'm already using. Quint Burnt Orange with more Piedmontite Genuine added into it.
I want to turn my attention to some detailing. So I reach for my smaller brush again. I do a unifying glaze to darken up that yellow ochre stripe I painted earlier. Right now everything on that sole is completely dry. So I can do a unifying glaze without rubbing too hard and not disturb the paint that is already there. That has the effect of darkening that yellow ochre stripe just a little bit. With very watery hematite genuine, I go in and darker the interior shadows that I see on the boot. They've really lightened up a lot. As I wait for the interior of the boot to dry, I start eyeing the other areas that need to be darkened up a little bit, such as the edges of the thickness of the leather and the stitching again. For this, I'm just using a really watery version of crinacridone orange. I start looking for the darkest areas I see that need to be painted still, such as the eyelet. Then I take a break and let everything dry again. I decide to use my small brush. I'm going to focus on a few of the details. I use Quinn Burnt Orange and just a touch of Piedmontite Genuine to start painting in the metal eyelets. They're really similar in color to the leather, but now that the leather that I painted in is dry, I'll have hard edges between the leather and the eyelet, which is what I wanted. Pay careful attention to these eyelets. They're not all circles. Some of them are ellipses, and the ellipses are of various sizes. So I try to capture those specific shapes for each individual eyelet. The bottom eyelet is in the shadow of the tongue of the boot, so that will be a lot darker. I really focus on the individual eyelets and folds of the leather to capture some realism. If I just paint one and decide that they're all like that and stop painting from observation, I'll break the illusion really quickly of the realism. With a watery mix of the same colors, I do a unifying glaze over those leather thickness, lighter lines that I painted earlier. They don't stand out as much now. I darken the shadow that's caused by the fold in the leather on the interior of the boot. I use Hematite Genuine, which is what I've used previously in this area. I darken the shadow and then I soften the edges. To paint the tongue of the boot, I use Piemontite Genuine mixed with Hematite Genuine. Although these colors are already in my painting, I haven't mixed the two specifically together. So it creates a slight different tone of brown, which is what I wanted for this tongue. While I let that dry, I go back to those eyelets and darken the leather around them. I'm using a fairly watery mix of Hematite Genuine. I want to lift out some thin highlights, and for that, I pick up my angular flat brush. It's just slightly damp, and I run it along the areas where I want to lift out a thin highlight that shows the thickness of the leather in certain areas of the boot. I dip the brush into water and I always tap out that excess water on my towel. I lift paint 
and then I clean the brush out again. Before I touch my painting again, of course, I dry it out on my towel. I'm getting pretty close to being done with this, so I scan the boot and the reference picture to see what other details I might add. As I'm nearing the end of the painting, it's time to look at the smallest details and time to paint them with my smallest brush. This is a miniature brush and it really just looks like a couple of eyelashes on a stick. I use it to paint in the thinnest dark lines that define the eyelids. With a slightly bigger brush, I just work my way through the details. I'm darkening up any areas that need it, softening any areas that need it, I'm really close to calling this done, but I want to darken the interior of the boot one more time, especially where that fold is. I'm using Hematite Genuine Fairly Watery and making sure to soften my edges. I really love the way this turned out, and I'm especially pleased by how Piemontite Genuine does all the hard work of making leather look like leather in watercolor. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you next time.